So if you've ever written API documentation by hand, then this video is for you because this tool is gonna to take so much weight off of your shoulders. So syncing up code bases, the documentation, and building your client libraries and making sure all that plays together is kind of a pain. But if you do things right and use the right tooling, you can put all that work into your code base and always have everything from the documentation to your client libraries up to date with your actual server-side code. The tool I'm talking about is OpenAPI, formerly known as Swagger. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what it is, how to use it, how to automatically generate your OpenAPI files from your server-side code, and how to automatically generate your client libraries from your spec. So today I wanna to talk about OpenAPI and Swagger. So as the person building the REST API, this is going to be a super useful tool for you because it's automatically going to generate your documentation and you can use it to build your client libraries. It's also great for your consumers because now they can actually read everything about the REST API in an easy to digest format and they can use it to generate their own clients. So first of all, what is OpenAPI? An OpenAPI is a specification to describe everything about your REST API. So this includes endpoints, this includes route parameters, this includes content bodies, request responses, all of the information about your API is funneled into one spot. So then what is Swagger? And up until version three, the specification was known as Swagger, but now it's known as OpenAPI. So now Swagger really describes the world around the specification. So this is the Swagger UI tool, which actually gives you a user interface to see the REST API information. Uh, that includes the code gen tooling they offer to generate server stubs and client libraries. And it also includes the code editor tool that they supply online. So we're gonna go over a really simple open API spec and we're gonna talk about what we're gonna use it for. So coming into here, we see the basic information about your open API specification. So the name of this API is my API. You can type a description here to outline what it's about. You can define your versioning, and then you can actually have contact information, which would include the name, the email, et cetera. And then we have components, which is probably one of the bigger pieces of the spec. So these are all of your requests, and these are all of your responses, and these are known as schemas. So we have the hello DTO, and you can see down here in our routes, we reference these schemas to define what the request and response objects are. So you don't need to do that for simple types like strings, but we can get into complex bodies or uh, class definitions, that's where you start using component schemas. So inside of the hello DTO, we type that as an object and we say that it has properties of message, which is a type of string. We have a type of status, which is also a string, but actually has some defined values, which are defined as a string enum. So now you can actually give back strings, but actually tell the consumer of the API what these string values are going to be, which is great for when you're talking about things like status codes or things of that nature, where you can actually define now exactly what the response is gonna look like. So then we have the path section, which is the other really important piece of your open API spec. So here we have a basic root level URL and we're using the get verb. The operation is get hello. So this can be uh, retrieve item, save item, etc. Uh, your parameters right now, these are empty but typically you're going to see things like a URL parameter, you're going to see a body parameter or uh, things of that nature. And then we have your response types. So right now we're just returning a 200. It's always going to be an okay response. You might see a 201 for created, a 404 for not found. And all of these things are actually going to describe which responses are going to be coming back from this route, what kind of response bodies you'll see, and give general overviews of what these responses are going to look like. So you can write all this by hand and it's not particularly hard, it is time consuming. And once you start getting into having a ton of schemas, it gets really exhausting, which is why we're using the Nest Open API tools to automatically generate it from our server side code. So we don't have to keep this thing up to date ourselves, it's gonna do it automatically. So the first thing I'm going to do is install all the packages I need to actually use the Swagger tooling. So I have this Nest Open API tools package that is going to have a peer dependency of Nest.js Swagger and also the Swagger UI Express. If you want to do this with Fastify, you'll have to use a different library. Uh, my Open API tools doesn't actually support Express right now, but you can kind of remake your own tooling around this for Fastify or contribute to this library, which I think would be way cooler. Okay, so those now all installed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a file known as generateclientoptions.ts. So I'm actually gonna paste in a file I've been reusing a few times because it's got all the settings I like. So I'm gonna create a function called create client. 
Inside of here, we're gonna use OpenAPI Nest Factory, and this is something coming from the Nest OpenAPI tools. So inside of here, you're gonna use the uh, document builder, and this is supplied by the Nest Swagger package. Uh, there's a whole lot of options here. There's set title. Uh, this actually set the title in the spec. This is where you're gonna define your uh, authentication mechanism. So if you have bearer tokens or if you have basic auth, you'd find all of that here, and that's gonna work at the high level of the document. So then inside of the uh, Nest factory configuration, I have a few settings here that are pretty important. So the file generation options, I'm going to generate a file at demo api spec.yaml. You can use that JSON. Uh, my personal preference is YAML. I don't really know why, usually I go for JSON, but YAML for this kind of thing just feels a lot cleaner for me. So then on client generation, this is actually going to leverage the same path. So demo api spec.yaml, and it's gonna use this YAML file to generate whatever type of client we want to use. So I'm using TypeScript Angular. I'm going to output it to clients slash TypeScript Angular slash source. And here's a bunch of options that kind of make it look the way I prefer it to look. So I know that uh, TypeScript Angular looks like a magic string, and I'm gonna tell you where this comes from and how you can configure your own client outputs. So I'm using OpenAPI generator underneath the hood. So all of these generators that they have, like I said, we're using TypeScript Angular. You can use TypeScript Axios, or you can go to a different language and use uh, JavaScript, Dart, Erlang, Bash, I guess. So whatever you wanna use. All of these generators are completely available and will fully work, and you can use all the config options made available to you. So I have all of this set up. Now I just need to actually run the script and actually get this thing working. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either run this as part of your main.ts and actually plug it in right here and just pass app to it. So this will actually run every time your server restarts. So if you're running start dev, every time you change the file, it'll automatically rebuild all these things. And that can be super useful. Obviously you don't want that to run in production. Uh, for this demo, I'm actually going to create a new script. We're gonna call it generate client.ts. I'm gonna copy a main here, generate client. I'm gonna get rid of this listener. And we're just gonna do it this way. All right, so I'm gonna come in here and package JSON. I'm gonna add a new script called generate client, and I'm just gonna leverage TS node to run source generate client.ts. So when I run this, it should generate an empty spec file and it should generate my client, although I don't expect anything to be there. So npm run generate client. We generated our spec file here. We have a root path at get operation ID of hello which is the generated uh, app controller default method. And we also have our clients folder. So inside of here, we generated a empty models file and we have a default service. Uh, all these things are failing because we don't actually have a package.json inside of this TypeScript folder. But this is where all your API outputs are gonna go. So if I search get hello in here, our default service has the get hello method, which corresponds directly to the app controller .get hello function on the server side. So now that we have nothing, let's create something. So I'm going to create a new model here. We'll call it the hello.dto.ts. So for nest swagger to work, you have to create each of your output payloads as classes because it needs those symbols to interpret what the types are. And then you actually have to decorate these with uh, a certain set of decorators they give you out of the box. Export class hello DTO. And we're just gonna have a message of type string. So when you build your DTOs, each one of your parameters needs this API property on here. So this is gonna actually tell the nest process what is the properties that are actually outputted on the DTO, and it can use this type reflection to figure out what it needs to print out into the spec file. It actually goes as far as to use enums. So let's say do an enum hello status greeted, not greeted. And I'm using string enums. You can use uh, integer enums if you want to, and this should all work the same way. So then I'm gonna add a new API property here of status, hello status. But with enums, you actually have to do a little bit extra work and there's an enum property here and you just pass that property type. 
And that's all you need to do for enums. It kind of works similarly for other deep types and more complicated types, and the spec will actually tell you everything you need to know about these things. It's pretty simple to follow, and they do a really good job of explaining all this. So now that we have our DTO defined, I'm gonna come back to the get hello method, and I'll just update inside of the service. Hello DTO. So I'll make a new DTO, and hello DTO. DTO dot message equals hello world. DTO dot status equals hello. I did not export this guy. So hello status dot greeted. And then I'll return this DTO. So now the service returns that. I'll need to update the route correspondingly. And then the last thing you need to do, actually not the last thing, it's a couple things. We need to decorate this guy with a uh, response type. So we know this is gonna come back as a okay response. So API okay response is the decoration you wanna use. And for each one of these, you actually have to pass it the type of the response. So we defined it here, but this is really just for TypeScript. Up here, this is actually passing the symbol of hello DTO. So now the process can actually determine what it needs to do to generate the right file. It can't do that based on just the typing of the response. So now we defined the okay response. We can run our script again, and this will actually generate the model along with update our path response type to have the model as our response. So it's gonna generate, come back to the spec, now underneath our schemas components section, we have hello DTO, we have our type, we actually have our enum and it looks exactly like we want it to look. And we see it as the schema reference for our get hello method. So now if we come back to models on our Angular client, we see a interface and enum outputted beautifully. Some This is what the options I put together here we're doing. So we have string enum is equal true, uh, turning off prefixes and a number of these things to make it look the way I prefer it to look. Uh, there's tons of configuration options that you'll see on the open generator, open API generator tech website. But then if you come back to get hello, if we hover over this guy, we see that it is an observable of hello DTO. So immediately we have all of our types already hooked up and all we did was run a simple little script. So I think that's really cool. Uh, but you'll notice here, this is underneath the default service. So we don't really want that because now all of our routes are gonna fall underneath default service and then you just have one service and that's kind of disgusting. What you need to do is add the tags and this is where it determines what service it's going to fall underneath. So we're running on the app controller, so I'm gonna call this tag. So this not only is going to update your actual spec output, but this corresponds to your client output accordingly. So when this thing runs, we come back to the spec file on our uh, on our path. It's actually going to add that tag, and then if we come back here, we now have app service set up accordingly, and this has get hello. So that's all it took. We all we already have the server side code generating our spec file, and then from our spec file, we are generating a full working client. So that's it. I think OpenAPI is a fantastic tool. It makes it really easy to communicate with your consumers, with other people in your company, with people on your team, and even for you as a developer on your own, it makes for a really good developer workflow when you're generating your client automatically as you write your server-side code. So if you liked the video, please subscribe, hit like, and I'll see you next time.